Okay. <laughs> I probably should ask folks before because if I'm assuming, you know, they're allowed to be looking at me. And again, if you look at this picture versus that picture, again. <coughs> now the text, because he used black text on a white background, not really an impact, all right? But again, it does become an issue. All right. Now, just like clothes, you know, If all we were worried about from our typography was being legible, if that was our only goal, then we could, com you know, someone could, a university could commission a research study and find out the most readable font, all right, or at least a couple of most readable fonts, all right, and they could publish that, and typography would be done, all right, and that would be it. All right, but clearly that hasn't happened. Why not? Well, for the same reason that clothes designers still have a job, even though people have figured out how to make a pair of jeans and a shirt. All right, because again, there's more to it than simply the functionality. All right, let me show you a little bit of what I mean. Here's three interesting little poster here. All right. All right, there's three posters. We'll go across and we'll look this way. They're all legible, at least if you had the book up close. I don't know how well you can read it. This one says, re-elect Senator Pruitt, and has a picture of a guy. This one says, Pruitt wanted for burglary, and has a picture of a guy. This one says, Pruitt named Angler of the Year. All of those are legible. All right, you can read all of those. You can see, hey, that's Pruitt. All right, we go down here. We improve it by having a more specific looking picture. All right. Re-elect Senator Pruitt. There he is there. Pruitt wanted for burglary, and they have him in front of a poster, or not a poster, the little line up there. Insert your own joke about they could have just as well used this picture for the Senator picture, but anyhow. And then finally, Pruitt selected Angler of the Year. They show him with his fishing gear on. Then finally, at the bottom, they have changed not just the image, but they've changed the type and added some other decoration. Re-elect Senator Pruitt. Pruitt wanted for burglary. Pruitt named Angler of the Year. I think we can agree that these are better than these. All right? Why? Because we're fine-tuning this, and we're going beyond making it legible to go in to... I would say really all of these last four, but particularly in this case, three and four. We're going in to make it more expressive. Now in this case, we're doing it with the images and with the text in the example I showed there. Our focus today is on the text, but the same thing applies with the image, right? It's funny whenever they want to, you know, you can see a newspaper sometime, if they want to you know, by what picture they select, they can choose to make a person look really smart or really foolish, right? You know, because everyone is, like, the smartest person in the world at some point in the day is going to like, oh, you know, and if they snap a picture at that time and that's the one they publish, they end up looking like a goof, all right? But anyhow, able to express, all right, and appropriate for the situation. Now, we talked about these things, What are some ways that we can use typography to be more expressive and to be more appropriate to the situation, along with being attractive? And then maybe some special meanings. <laughs> Let's consider all these four. All right. What are some things? So we talked about our basic legibility. All right. And we can define some pretty basic rules for that. <coughs> How do these other things come into play? How can we make our fonts more attractive or more expressive or more appropriate or convey some sort of special meaning? Like the fonts they use on uh, mushy greeting, Valentine greeting cards. It's usually some kind of okay. flowing 
script. Okay. Let's look. Let's see if we can find something along those lines. Yeah, and just some. Stack the deck even further, I, I uh, Googled it uh, S H O P P E because I figured that would really be extra fancy. All right? So let's look at it. And let's come to some conclusion based on this. If you notice, right at the top. Yeah. That's, that's a more um, decorative sort of font, it's not a straightforward serif font little curlies and all that, and boom, just as you described, the cursive, giving it a, a fake personal look and all that. They could have had this in Times New Roman and Verdana, and it would say the same thing, yet it wouldn't create the same feeling. It, it wouldn't be as expressive. Do notice, though, when they get down to business, and I like this, when they get down to the actual text, that's in some basic... Uh, sans serif font. So that's uh, uh, Arial or Abetica or Verdana or one of those. All right. Let's poke around here. Why? They're not teaching cursive anymore. Oh. All right. There again is some more fake cursive. They're really not teaching cursive anymore. That's good because I. It up. Yeah, they should have started quite a few years ago. That would have helped me quite a bit. <laughs> Although my printing isn't much better in my cursive, so maybe not. Interesting thing, here they don't do that too much, and it doesn't look as good, I would say. I hate websites like that. Yeah. It makes me, like, even if I need to go there for, like, whatever reason, I'll go somewhere else just because it looks like crap. It, exactly. It, it, um, you know, what do they say? You know, it, it never, uh, Never, you know, there's never a second chance to make a first impression, you know. That is like your storefront or whatever. And if you see something that looks, you know, if you went by a store and it looked kind of like a mess and trashy, you know, and a website can convey that feeling as well. But when it comes down to what's attractive, that's a, that's a subjective judgment. And it's hard to know what's attractive to one person, what you like, Way different from what he likes. That is true. Um, so you're you're ne so so. What can we learn from that? As a business, you target the largest audience. Yeah. One thing you do, first of all, is while that may be true, that people have individual preferences and all that. In some cases, you can sort of make some sort of generalizations. All right, of target audiences. You know, of. Someone visiting a bridal shop probably would be open to this sort of typography as opposed to like a real grungy looking stenciled font, you know. Um, so you can, you can make some conclusions based on the feeling that you're trying to evoke. I guess the other lesson for this is don't, don't get too crazy with this, all right. Even if you are going to go in and do some decorative font like they do here, notice again. There's just enough of it to kind of give that aura, to give that feel, but their text is pretty basic otherwise. I think when you compare the actual articles, it solidifies the point of the serif versus sans serif. If you compare this one to the one before, uh -huh. this one's a little bit harder to read, it. I mean, at least from where I sit. I think also the fact that their font is like in this almost dark gray Yeah, it, 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 it is. Yeah, it is easier to read on the screen than it uh, than it is being projected. So, uh, I, I will say on the screen it, it it does not look that bad, but on the you know uh, projected up here, um, yeah, it's a little harder to read. Um, let's go to a site. 
and a company that's known for their typography, Apple. What can you say about their typography? What does their typography say to you? Simplicity. All right. Very simple. All right. Anyone else have another adjective that they would want to use? I don't think it's, I don't think that's the same thing, and I think that's a, another excellent word. It's very sleek. Standard. All right. It's standard. All right. Uh, in other words, all the page look the same. There, there's a word that that people use all the time, and I actually hate the word, but it, it is somewhat relevant. So I'll bite my tongue and use it at least <laughs> once. And that word is branding. All right. You'll hear a lot of people talk about branding your company and making sure your brand has a, a and again the the fact that this is consistent from page to page and it's also consistent if you get their packaging right if anyone has an iPhone or whatever you look you got the same font on your iPhone right so it's consistent there's a very strong brand image done by that and again the two adjectives that I heard uh, simplicity and sleek are probably the things that pe they would want people to think about their computers. That's how they're marketing their computers. You know, sleek, great little laptops that are simple to use. You don't have to worry about viruses and this and that, and you just start using it and get it done. Yeah, I was going to say. Now, whether it, keep in mind, this is the image that they're trying to project. Whether it's accurate or not, that's a debate for another class. All right, maybe they, maybe the operating systems class. If you take that, you can have that debate in there. It does, very closely. And again, they could have used any font. They don't have to follow these rules. But they're taking, it's still legible. So it's not, they're not like doing this at the expense of legibility. They're doing this in addition to the legibility. All right, so they're going beyond just the merely legible and making something that achieves these other goals, that expresses things and expresses sort of a brand vision uh, for that. Um, I wish I could think of a real old-fashioned company. Can anyone think of a company they would call really old-fashioned? What are those really old computers? Are they like IBM or something? IBM. Yeah, let's see those. See what IBM looks like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Newspapers, that's a good one. Let's look at the New York Times. There you go. New York Times, an institution that's been around for hundreds of years. All right. Yeah. Interestingly enough, they use, they use serif both for the heading and for that. But this looks more old fashioned than Apple, I would say. So they're trying to keep it like a newspaper. Yeah, they're trying to keep it like a newspaper. Again, down to the, the masthead and all that. Again, very similar to the newspaper. I think we skipped something when we were talking about legibility though. Alright? So let's rewind for a second. I think we missed, actually, we missed a key point. Shame on me. There's an aspect of legibility that has absolutely nothing to do with the letters on the page. It has nothing to do with the color of the letters. It has nothing to do with the font of the letters, the size of the letters, the spacing between. Exactly. And typically that is called white space. All right. White space um, helps the user organize the, the content of it and separate things into digestible, easy pieces, makes it easy to understand. And you see it all the time. You know, notice that in a book, for example, I'm trying to find a page that has mostly text on it, like this. We look at this book, this page, 
They could fit a lot more words on here if they wanted to. All right? They could start here and have wall-to-wall -wall words going all the way down to there. And they could make the book less pages and so on and so forth. The problem is, is it would be less legible. For one thing, um, your eye has a tendency, as you go across a, a, a long line, to move up or down a little bit. All right? I don't know. There might be a word for that. But that's why newspapers are typically printed in columns and, and books. Even, even this book, you know, is printed in columns. Why? Because as I'm reading across, my eye can keep its focus for that small distance and go down to the next line, next line. If I was going all the way across, I might go up and down a little bit. And it makes it a little harder to read. My second poster is about that. Pardon me? My second poster is about that. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. All right. I do need to review those. I did glance, I think, at most of them, but I will, I will review uh, those in more detail. In addition, the fact that it's not crammed together, notice there's space between lines, there's space between columns. All that white space sort of gives the person, um, allows the person to more easily read stuff. It's not cramped, it's not um, you know, wall to wall words, and it helps the user. The white space helps the user visually organize the page. And, and we'll talk a little bit more about this as we get into some of these things with special meaning. Let me look at the time. It is about 1.48. Okay. I didn't bring my phone. Okay. I want to take a picture to remember these categories. Someone remember them. <laughs> or you have them in your notes? Excellent. Um, what we're going to do next time, among other things, is we're going to talk about how these come into play. All right? Our basic assumption is, yes, we want our content to be legible. All right, so yeah, we're not going to do this at the sacrifice of legibility. But what are some things we can do to make it look a little better? To maybe express some things? To be appropriate for a different situation. What does that mean? You know, we talked about in the case of clothing, what makes it appropriate as well as the kind of weather is outside, right? Clothes for summer isn't appropriate in winter and vice versa. What do we mean as our typography? Uh, appropriateness. Assuming it's all legible, what can we do there? And finally, is there any kind of special meaning that we can we can attach to things uh, that we can express just via the typography and through nothing else? Just like the police officer or the football referee expresses some special meaning just by virtue of the clothing that they wear. All right. So we'll consider these points two through five uh, next time. All right. We'll see you in lab.